Morning, Ohio. James Ernest of the Gruen Truth here with Matt Marvel of Professional Wrestling. Matt, thank you for joining us today. How's it going? Doing great. What sports did you play growing up? Growing up, I played a lot of football, played a lot of basketball, and, uh, you know, team sports are clearly what turned me into the su- successful leader that I am today. Nice. So when did you fall in love with professional wrestling? That probably happened around the age of four or five. Man, it started early in my entire life. I knew that I wasn't just going to be watching on TV my whole life. I knew eventually people would be watching me. I knew one day it was going to come. I just had to uh, do the work, do what needed to be done to get to the top. That is awesome. So clearly you've done the work. Who did you do it with? Who trained you? Uh, up in North Texas, I've had a few different trainers over the years. Uh, Noby, uh, Noby Bryant, the real deal, helped train me starting out. Shane Stratmore as well. Both of those guys played a large, large part in uh, me developing as a, as a wrestler and learning how to do it inside the ring and outside the ring as well. I mean, being a manager, you, it's not... You're not in between the ropes. That's not where you live. That's not where you play. So when you were training, who was there with you? Who was also who was also developing? Man, back at that time, uh, Jake Logan is a guy that I always think back to. At ten years old, me and Jake Logan were were chain wrestling in the middle of the ring, and with that guy now hitting the top level of the Indies and looking like he's just a step or two away from uh, going to a larger place, it's exciting to see a guy that I remember growing up with and doing that right square in the middle and seeing where he's doing it now. So who have you wrestled for, or who have you worked for? I worked for Rampage All-Star Wrestling. Uh, We're currently, uh, the Pack are the Advanced Pro Wrestling Tag Team Champions. Um, I worked for Top of Texas Wrestling, Amarillo Pro Wrestling, uh, Phoenix Championship Wrestling. We worked a lot of different places. Excellent. So it sounds like you've had a lot of experience and dealt with a lot of interesting people. Who? What is some of the best advice those people have given you? Uh, that's tough. I've had a lot of good advice, but I think the best advice that I can think of came from the main event, Mike Fox. One day he looked at me and he said, it's not about getting yourself over. It's about making everyone else around you look better than they did the day before, than the week before, than the show before. If you make someone look better and you do your job so well that it makes their job easier, you're winning. That is awesome. So currently, what is the best thing about professional wrestling? Right now, I think we're in a swing back of uh, people want real. People want authentic. People want something they can hold on to. That curtain was ripped down so long ago and everyone's gotten a look behind it. So many people are so much more candid and open with who they are and what they are outside of the ring. And I think most people yearn for the authentic, the genuine characters. I think that's why you see guys like Taker and so many of those guys get over for so long is because they were the character. They look at them and they don't see a man. They don't see a regular name. They see something that's larger than life. And I think the best thing about pro wrestling now is you're seeing the emergence of some of these characters like The Fiend and... Uh, some guys on AW Murderhawk, Lance Hoyt, where they're taking it to a point where it feels real. It feels genuine. It puts a little fear in you, and that's important. I mean, to tell a good story, you need to be excited and you need to be afraid. So for our listeners that are interested in learning more about you, where on social media, where on the web can they find out about you? Uh, best way is Facebook. You can go uh, Matt Marvel Facebook. You can follow me there. Uh, you can also check out the PAX YouTube page. Uh, you can find access to all of our matches and everything that we're associated with there as well. And then uh, if you want to see us up close and personal, uh, August 28th and 29th, you can show up to the NITEC Center in North Richmond Hills, and you can watch us do our thing on August 28th and 29th at the Expo Show. Excellent. That's the next thing I want to talk about. I want to talk all about the Expo. I want to talk about who are fighting words. Fighting Worst Promotion, they're an upstart company looking to, to shake the indie world a little bit. They're looking to do things that other people haven't done before. They're looking to take top guys from every promotion around and help all of them get over. They're not worried about getting themselves over as much as they're worried about getting independent pro wrestling over. 
And so when you when you do that and you give these guys the ability to work with guys that are, you know, on the other side of the fence per se that they don't always get to see because they're on a different T V screen, it's gonna be a whole lot of fun to see all the different dynamics and uh, matchups. So basically this feels like an all star game. It does. It feels it feels kinda like a super show. It feels it feels like something I feel very honored to be a part of as an independent wrestler here in Texas. That uh, you know, I look at the independent, the local guys that are on the card, along with some of the the larger names that are on TV, and you see some names in the middle where you're like, man, I've seen them before, I've heard of them, but I don't know everything that they're about. Getting to see all these guys in person and kind of pulling everyone together from different areas, it's going to be really, really interesting. So this sounds like this event's going to open eyes. It's going to show you, of course, the names you already know and uh, focus or highlight them. But it's also going to give you those names you may not know as well yet. So I mean, it sounds. Oh like yeah, by the yeah. by the time you leave, you won't be thinking about the names that you know. What you'll be thinking about is, man, I had no idea who that guy was, but he took it to someone that I know who would, I know who they are. I've seen them before, and I saw what this kid did against them, and it, it, it blew my socks off. And that's our goal. That's our goal as the pack is to go in there uh, and make a name off of Stephen Bonner. You know, he's a UFC Hall of Famer, and we'll be taking him on in the main event of the Expo show. And our goal is to put him down, make him look like a fool, show him that he should have stayed fighting and stopped wrestling, and, and, and boost our own credibility, boost our own reputation. Oh, wow. They're starting to get uh, more and more of the UFC people trickling into professional wrestling, it seems. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it from a tough guy standpoint. Um, I, I know he may be tough enough to do it, but... Dancing in a cage and dancing in a ring are two different things. And uh, we plan on exposing him and making him look like the 40-year-old rookie. I know what you mean. I was going to say not everybody's Dan Severn, not everybody's Ken Shamrock, not everybody can do both things. No, and those guys did it from the jump. That's the difference as well. They didn't roll over at 35 and decide that, oh, well, I don't want to get punched for real anymore. Uh, let me jump over to wrestling and see how I fare there. Well, let me tell you, it's still it's still a contact sport, and there are still things that you do not understand about the business when when you're six months, one year, even five years in. There are things that you you just don't understand without having the time put in. Yeah, that was the amazing thing about uh, Dan. He ended up walking into... Um the UFC championship match with the NWA title on his shoulder. Oh, yeah, I think that was a goal of Brock Lesnar's as well yeah. for a while. I think it was to, to walk around with both at some point, to call himself the uh, the overall best combat athlete in the world, because wrestling's kind of taking a turn that way. Wrestling's, uh, it's starting to get to the point where you have a couple guys that are in there, and they're looking at each other going, well, I don't want to just... I don't want to just beat him for the crowd and and convince the crowd that I'm better than them. What I want to do is beat him down and show the crowd that I'm better than him both ways. And you, you have guys that are, are working a much, much more strong style, you know, similar to what we've seen in Japan over the last few years or old school NWA where guys really take it to each other and they bring it. And it's not, it's not so much a ballet as it is, uh, you know, closer to a fight. Exactly. If you fool around out there, you could end up getting stretched. Absolutely, absolutely. So what is the Independent Wrestling Expo? I mean, obviously it's going to be two great nights of fights, but there's more to it than that, I'm assuming. There is. Uh, from what it sounds like, they'll have three wrestling cards over the two days. There will be a card night one. There will be an expo show, which we will main event, uh, I believe, that starts at 3 o'clock on the 29th. And then the night show on night two, which will be capped off with an NWA championship match. Uh, triple threat with Nick Aldis defending on, against Jeff Cobb and the winner of a Battle Royal Night 1, which one of my pack members happened to be in that Battle Royal, so our goal there is to win that and also headline the main event on Night 2. Oh my, so in other words, you could be uh, walking out the manager of the world champion by the time this it, is over. It is possible that by the end of the night, I could be escorting out the NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Now, that's a lot to be, there's a lot to be seen. I understand Nick Aldis is 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 no rookie. He is no child. I, I'm much more worried of a, a guy like Nick Aldis than I am Stephen Bonner. Sorry, sorry, American Psycho. I'm much more worried of the big Brit. Yeah, I was going to say, I remember back when Nick was a rookie, uh, back when uh, he was a gladiator, and uh, he's definitely come a long way and done some amazing things. He has come a long way. He's leading NWA, I feel like, on his back compared to most of the other companies. You know that size? 
it, it feels like they're not quite as deep as some of the other ones, and Nick's made it a point to try to carry them as far as he can. And I like how he has his own video game coming out. Yeah, that is interesting, too. And he's having you do stuff independently like that. It's going to give guys the option to license their own rights out, and people are going to jump into that game and find people that they didn't know beforehand, but they'll know after playing it. Exactly. And cool. that's kind of what the Independent Wrestling Expo is aiming to do as well. We're going to have a lot of people here that you know people see on the poster, they see on promotions, they go, oh, I want to see that guy. And that's great because we want to have, we want to have reason for people to come. But the substance, once they're there, is what's going to matter the most. And so once we knock their socks off and they find new people that they had no idea about before that night, and they get to follow them and see where they they go next, that'll be the most exciting part of this. Exactly. I mean, here there are going to be legends that are going to be there talking about different things. Uh, Jake, I think, is one of the ones presenting, and there's some others that uh, I mean, are world famous. Yeah, I think Jake the Snake's supposed to be there. I'm excited to, to meet Jake. Uh, I think he's a little old to be managing at this point. Um, I, I, I think maybe he should just stick to doing the story times. But I'm excited to see what, what he's got to say with Lance. So is it easier to name the people that aren't going to be at the event than it is to name the people that are going to be in the event? Because, I mean, there are so many names, so many If you're names. an independent wrestling fan, it probably is easier to name a few people that are there than aren't there. I mean, it is deep from top to bottom between the Battle Royal, between the All Beef, between the main events on nights one and two. Uh, I mean, guys like Lance Archer, Jacob Fatu, Chris Masters, uh, Brian Cage. The, it, it goes on and on. The, the amount of human carnage that's going to be taking place within that 48 hours inside the Night Tech Center is going to be off the chain. And the great thing about it, you can buy tickets for one day or two, I understand. You can buy tickets uh, either way. Uh, there is a gold ticket that is $150 for the closest seat, and that is for both days. Uh, then there is a second tier that is the silver ticket. That's $100 for both days as well uh, in the second area of floor seating. And then you can buy $75 per day tickets at the door or online either day. Sounds amazing. And then with the tickets, does that include the expo, or do you have to pay extra for the expo? Uh, it includes everything as far as the day ticket. So if you buy uh, the day ticket for Saturday with most of the expo events or the, either the two-day passes, um, absolutely every event, uh, event with the expo is covered. Um, it's all included in the show. That's part of the ticket price point, I believe, is, is just the overall amount. It is, more, it is more than a show. It is definitely an event. Oh, Between okay. all of the story times and the contests and the drawings, uh, and the meet and greets, and the promotions, and the, the walkthroughs, and the lessons. It's, there's going to be a lot of information that indie, indie wrestling fans are going to get to grab onto and go, man, I learned that at the Independent Wrestling Expo. I found this out. I heard this from this guy. This wrestler told all of us this. Things like that that they won't be able to get anywhere else. Now, fortunately, there's other states nearby, but uh, for the most part, there's 49 states that are kind of mad, and probably some other countries, that they're not the ones holding this event. So for those people that aren't going to be in Texas, that are going to be, say, like us in Ohio, how can we watch, how can we see these great matches? Well, you can fly out and buy a ticket and watch it live. Or if you can't afford to do that, what you can do is, uh, I do know they're working on a streaming service. Uh, I don't know if they've announced that yet, okay. but it will be coming out very, very soon. With us being just, I believe they're actually waiting for this weekend to announce it one week out before uh, to get a lot of promotion and press out there for it. I do know that it is going to be a stream ser streaming service that most sport and fight fans yeah. F should have. Exactly. Most and fight fans so, should have yes. Service, so, mo yeah, yeah, exactly. Most fight fans should have the app. And so, if you have the app, I'm sure you'll see the Independent Wrestling Expo on there August 28th and 29th. Sounds great. So, now, who are the sponsors? Who, who do we need to thank for bringing all this together? Uh, the sponsors for everyone bringing this show together. One huge one is Advanced Pro Wrestling. Uh, that's actually the promotion that we have our tag team championships at. Uh, currently right now at the pack, they're helping put on the Halftime Heat Expo show, um, doing a lot there. In terms of other sponsors, I know obviously Fighting Wars Promotions as a whole is doing a lot of its own marketing and a lot of its own uh, pushing and pulling. Uh, War Room MMA, uh, which is uh, where Steven trains, uh, they'll be doing a lot on that night as far as event help, um, setting everything together together. Uh, 
a lot, a lot of aspects are being covered by War Room MMA for this show as well. Excellent. So it's uh, like Metro Flex Gym, that's where the War Room is at. So it seems like there is a bit of a collaborative effort, but definitely for the most part, uh, Fighting Words is doing uh, the lion's share, it sounds like. Oh, yes, yeah. Their, their idea from the beginning was we want to do this on our own. We want to put this together without any outside help and show everyone this is possible. You don't have to watch six different shows to watch all your favorite wrestlers. You can come to one and see every single one of them in one weekend. That is awesome. Hopefully, uh, based on how well this goes, we can get that into a touring thing and we can get you all up to either Cincinnati, Ohio, or Columbus, Ohio, or Cleveland, somewhere around that area, maybe Indianapolis, and uh, have another amazing event like this one's going to be. I don't think they would be opposed to that. I know the uh, I know Fighting Words has, has looked into running future shows as well um, with the success and buzz of this show that we've already had going in. Um, and it's going to be even more successful once both nights conclude and the, the talk after is going to be even larger than the talk before. Um, but yeah, where the next show takes place will be a, an interesting point and see how far they move and if they're willing to go cross country, Where what other fans they would like to give the treat of the show that well. So where on social media, where on the, where, uh, the web can we find out more about this event? Uh, on the web for that, you can find a Twitter page uh, dedicated to the show. Uh, it is the Independent Wrestling Expo Twitter page. Um, all updates you can find there on Facebook. If you follow uh, Fighting Wars Promotions, or more importantly, Devin Storm, his page, he is constantly putting out updates for the uh, event every single day, multiple drops per day of new talent, new matches being announced. Um, those are the two best places, I would say, to go find information for the show. And if you want tickets, you can go to ticks.com, search Independent Wrestling Expo, uh, and you can get your gold, silver, or single day tickets there. So like you said, I mean, this is going to be such an epic and probably a historic event. That oh, yeah, I, I feel lucky to be on it just because I know this is going to go down to the books and people are going to talk about this event, and uh, you never know who they'll bring up. You never know who it's going to be uh, that, that shows out. Uh, it's like the Super Beef. You've got ten guys in that match, uh, heavyweight champions across the world, black a guy. Black Taurus from AAA, uh, Ryan Davidson, Rodney Mack, all, Hammerstone. I mean, you have guys from all walks of wrestling life coming together in the ring for one match. Apex accompanied by me. It's going to be incredible. It does. It sounds like an amazing event. Thank you, Matt, for joining us today. I appreciate it.